I want to play my Gibson SG Special. We're going to find out if it's any good. This video isn't like other videos, you know, where you, you're just talking for about seven and a half minutes and then only a minute worth of playing. There's going to be a heck of a lot of playing. I'll just try to keep the yammering on until the end of the video. I also know I look like an idiot right now, but you know what? It's January, and for some reason, it's actually very hot out. We're also going to be doing some comparisons between a couple of other guitars and this guitar. And as always, Signal Chain is listed in the description down below, and check out the chapter markers. There's a lot of playing and stuff like that, so you might want to skip around. But enough talking, let's get after it. You can't really do a review on YouTube without, you know, kind of talking about the specs. So I'm going to try and quickly do that and we'll get back to five more sound samples. We have a carved mahogany body with a gloss nitro finish. We have a mahogany neck that has the slim taper neck carve with it. We also have a bound rosewood fretboard with the dot inlays. We have the silk screened Gibson logo on the front of the headstock and the oval button vintage deluxe Gibson tuners. We have CTS audio taper pots that are hand soldered with the orange drop capacitors, a three-way toggle switch which controls the two P90 pickups. As far as a bridge we have the lightning bar. But that's enough talking, here's five more sound samples. <laughs>
So now that we've heard the five sound samples there, I do have to do something that is beneficial, uh, but it is basically uh, appeasing some people on the internet so they don't turn their comments into, you know, tears. Uh, so we're gonna play the bridge, the middle, and then the neck position just in a clean type tone. I've always found that, just to me, there's a little more benefit uh, to my ears when you're hearing just a little bit of drive. So let's go ahead and hear those with just a little bit of drive. We talked about the audio taper potentiometers here, so let's go ahead and take a listen to them. curious on you know what really is the difference between the SG Junior and the SG Special. They no longer make the SG Tribute so now these are the two most affordable Gibson SG's available. For the obvious differences here we have a single dog ear P90 in the bridge position as opposed to to soap bar style uh, P90's so a bridge and then a neck, they're the same pickup, just different construction. And as well, the SG Special has a bound fretboard with the nice little uh, nubbies or the nibs or whatever you want to call them, that's nibs, uh, on the fret ends, whereas the SG Junior does not have uh, a bound fretboard. And if you're kind of like me and you live in Canada or somewhere where you know the temperatures do change, uh, you can actually start to feel the fret ends um, after a few years. And as far as weight, the SG Special is definitely heavier than the SG Junior. Of course, it does have one more pickup. But I find the biggest difference is um, when you're playing. So if you're playing the Junior and then you switch to the Special and then you switch back to the Junior, the Junior has a little more vibration to it and it does acoustically seem to um, 
you feel a little more resonance in your body when you're playing the guitar as opposed to the SG Special. Does that matter to you? Maybe, but it's really all personal preference. So here is a uh, very simple, because uh, we can only do a bridge comparison, so we'll do like a two little tiny comparison samples between the two. Also be curious on uh, how the SG Special sounds and maybe feels uh, in comparison to the SG Standard 61. I did debate whether to use the just the generic SG Standard or the SG Standard 61. This video is going to be long enough as it is, so I didn't want to keep grabbing uh, different SG models and then keep going. Um, so. As far as weight, of course, the SG standard is a little heavier. There's a massive, massive, massive difference here. Um, you're gonna feel a little more presence in the uh, SG standard 61, of course, acoustically, than you do uh, with the SG special. A lot heavier than this one here, but that has to do with um, the extra weight from the different size of the pickup, of course, um, and as well the uh, the size of the bridge. Um, they are as far as you can really see the same thickness and everything, but just construction wise uh, with all the different hardware that's on the 61, there's just a little more weight. And again, you're going to feel a lot more presence here and a lot more resonance here. Of course, you're going to feel that in your body acoustically, but here is a bridge, middle, and then neck position comparison. be curious on the Les Paul special versus the SG special. Now I'm partially colorblind. This and uh, of course that mixed with the lighting in here, this is going to probably look green or grayish green, um, which it, it's TV yellow. So it's sort of yellow. Um, but yeah, it's probably just my eyes if you're seeing the color differences there. Um, both of these here, of course, you're looking at an SG and then a Les Paul Special. Um, we have the lightning bar here versus the non-compensated wraparound. Um, the lightning bar, it's just all personal preference when you're, you're talking about uh, both of the bridges. But the lightning bar, I've always, uh, I haven't liked as much as the non-compensated wraparound. Um, just because it feels like when I'm playing leads, there's a little more play 
uh, in my bends here versus every now and then I feel that little tiny plink um, when you're, you're doing bends on the lightning bar. I f also feel that I'm absolutely crazy and it's not one of those things where, you know, you feel that little plink and you go, I can't, I can't play that guitar at all. It's not like it's really, really bad, but it's just something that I do notice. So um, otherwise, same electronics and everything. This is way, way, way heavier. And when you're playing from the SG Special to the uh, Les Paul Special, this has the slim taper neck. This has the uh, fat 50s neck on it. They're gonna feel completely different. Um, so that's, yeah, let's go ahead and listen to some sound samples. Uh, bridge, middle, and then neck position. And then finally, to round out all of the different sound samples in this video, this is also a blue guitar. I don't know, I'm partially colorblind again, so this may show up as like purple. I have no idea. Um, but uh, a lot of people are kind of curious when it comes to P90 single coil versus um, just a generic, well not generic, uh, a Stratocaster single coil. So uh, let's go ahead and hear um, bridge, middle, and then neck. So we're gonna kind of avoid doing uh, position two and position four, and of course, because this is an American professional too, it has the push pull, so it gives you two other positions. We're not gonna be doing those, just bridge, middle, and then neck. Mm -hmm. So that is absolutely it when it comes to all of the different sound samples and the different comparisons. I'm not going to be playing anymore so we can, you know, talk about if this is a good guitar or not very quickly, hopefully, and then, you know, go our separate ways, call it a day, and I'll probably have a nap. So is this a good guitar? Absolutely. It is a fantastic guitar. I tend to say that all the time uh, with these videos, um, but it is one of those guitars that... I struggled to allow myself to buy. I wanted it, I wanted it, I wanted it, I wanted it. I wanted it in Heritage Cherry. Uh, I didn't really want it in the black. And the reason behind that is whenever I buy a black guitar, I always automatically think to myself, it needs gold hardware. I do the same thing with blue guitars too. Um, and when it comes to the lightning bar, Gibson doesn't make it in gold. Same thing with their oval tuning buttons, The um, the Vintage Deluxe, they don't make those in gold either. So I would have to go with uh, Clusons. And they are not the vintage sizing, they're the regular sizing. So I could put whatever tuners I wanted in here, uh, but I kind of want to keep this, you know, as close to spec as I possibly can. So that's why I didn't want black, but I'm very happy that I actually bought black. It looks really cool and I'm partially colorblind. I don't have to color correct black. 
So when it comes to playing leads on this guitar, it's fantastic. It just, there's just a lot of different uh, tonal options that you get uh, with P90s especially. Um, and the feel of it is very, very nice. The only kind of downside is the fact that it is a lightning bar. And what I find with the lightning bar is every now and then when you do like big bends, it, it'll kind of uh, give you a little bit of a plink, like a little plink. I don't know what that really is on the non-compensated uh, wraparounds. It doesn't happen. But on all of the guitars that I have the lightning bar on, it happens. It's not a big deal. It's just me being absolutely nuts. And I don't ever go like, can't play that guitar again. I continue to play it. I just go, oh, mental note. And the big thing I find with uh, wraparounds versus like the tunematic or the stop bar is uh, it's a little rough when it comes to setting your tension and then your height. So tension, you really get that by raising the strings. Um, or changing your uh, string gauge. And that's not something that I enjoy doing. I'm just so used to uh, 10 to 46 gauge strings. I know it's ridiculous, um, but I tried uh, 9 to 42 and I tried 11s and I just, every time I, I just, I feel at home with 10 to 46. So it's not something I like to do, but I always find myself uh, with these kind of raising uh, the low end, or sorry, the higher, uh, the thinner strings, geez. Uh, um, I, I find a spot that I find very comfortable to play leads on, and then like two days later, I go, I should raise that a little bit. So that's also something that I find just with wraparounds. And hey, this is a P90 guitar. P90 guitars are just fantastic. A lot of people do overlook them because uh, you you get uh, a little bit of uh, hum with them because they're single coils, right? Um, and as well, a lot of people are really used to uh, humbuckers or they're used to regular single coils. And, and just if you introduce uh, the littlest bit of uh, difference, it can turn some people off. I'm generally the opposite to where as I want as many different uh, sounding pickups as I kind of can, I guess. But these pickups here, they have a lot of kind of bite and a lot of anger in them. And uh, as long as you're willing to, it's horrible for some people, as long as you're actually willing to dial back on your volume and your tone, you can get almost any type of sound out of this guitar here or out of these pickups here. Um, it is something that I like for a humbucker. Generally what I'll do is I'll put it in the middle position. This is for leads. I'll put it in the middle position and I'll kind of dial back on either the bridge or on the neck. And then I'll start messing around with the tone on one or the other of the pickups. And that's usually where I'll find like some sweet spots for leads. But when you're playing um, with just a little bit of drive, uh, like, you know, if you're not trying to get like a metal tone or something like that, and you're just playing with a little bit of drive, uh, especially with a little bit of reverb, that's really when uh, I find that P90s shine. And um, where a lot of people will go to the neck position to get that kind of creamy tone, with P90s, you can actually bring it back. Like if you start with the volume around like eight and a half or nine, and then start moving that tone back, you can get some absolutely magical sounds just on the bridge pickup. That's why a lot of people enjoy Les Paul Juniors and SG Juniors. And tuning stability is great. Stretch your strings, not just when you first put them on. So if you're gonna be tuning, tune up to pitch, never down to pitch, then stretch those strings, tune up to pitch again, stretch those strings. I usually do that about three times. Um, that way I know that when I'm going to start bending the stuff from the nut to the post of the tuner, there's not gonna be a whole bunch of slack in here, so it shouldn't start to go uh, flat. So tuning stability, good. So that really is all I have to say about this guitar. Uh, you will be seeing more uh, of this guitar in different videos as I you know, slowly get a little more energy. Um, 
in myself, because right now for the last couple of weeks I've been <laughs> exhausted. Um, but you'll start to see more videos on this. I'll probably do a couple of comparisons and then I'll probably do a will it metal, just because when I do that, uh, it, it drives some people nuts. And with an SG special, I probably will get like 30 or 40 comments of people that just say like, have you ever heard of Tony Iommi? Hey, Tony Iommi, eh? He played those guitars, eh? So you, you don't make that video. That's, that's, I'm looking forward to that. It'll be fantastic. Anyway, thanks for watching.